My name is Raymond Loomis. I'm almost 85. I've been in the print shop for like 70 years. So I know a little bit about this. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. When I was a youngster, we were poor. And uh, so I figured out, well, where can I get a job? I started scouting around and I found this little printing shop around the corner from where we lived. And I went in there one day and I wanted to know if I could get a job. He said, well, what do you do? I said, how old are you? You know, all these questions. And so I told him, I said, well, I won't be 15 until July the 22nd. Well, come back July the 22nd and we'll see what happens. So I went back that day and sure enough, they said they'd hire me running errands, sweeping the floor and learning a little bit as I got older and time went on, I started doing more and more and more stuff. Then I found out that there was a school that was a printing school, Mergenthaler School. That was high school for me. By the time you got to into the third year is when you started on a lot of type. That was the premium. Everybody didn't get to do that. When I went to school, I went in as a dummy, and when I graduated in three years, I was an outstanding graduate. So it must have meant it was something I liked to do. So I've been in a print shop ever since. A fellow named Gutenberg invented the idea of making movable type. His idea was if I can make a mold that's variable, L's are skinny and W's are fat, you know, that kind of stuff. So he invented a mold that was able to make the different, be adjustable. And they did that for a long time, from 1450 about to 1886. That's when the Lonotype machine was invented. Downtown Baltimore, young, another young German, came to America as a young person. He wasn't 18 yet, and he was already a journeyman watchmaker. Atmar, strange name, Mergenthal, or Mergentower, however you want to say it. So these newspaper guys came to him with this idea. They had a plan, and it was nothing like a Lonotype machine, but it would be a typesetting device. He looked at the plans and said, it ain't gonna be any faster, but I'll make it. So he made it, and it was just like he said, it worked, but it wasn't any faster. But now this put him on the case. It took about four years for him to devise the, 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 the machine as just about like it is, and he came up with one that they could, they could manufacture, and then the newspaper, everybody wanted one. And that's a complicated machine to make a lot of machines like that, but they manufactured a lot of them. Lasted about 90 years. They borrowed all the stuff from the Lonotype. The typefaces, if you have a computer, you know Times Roman, started right on a Lonotype machine. This one came from Washington, D.C. It, it started out in a type, a type house where they set type for printers. No printing presses, just set type. And then the Bureau of Engraving in Washington, where they print money, they bought that. They bought the Lonotype. They had it installed in the Bureau of Engraving in Washington. And it was there for a long time. And then they declared it surplus one day. All of a sudden, they got a computer to do all what this used to do. And the guy who used to run it, he told him, you know, he said, that machine is too good to throw away. He, he mentioned it, and somehow the museum found about, oh, let's have that. So they conned somebody into shipping it over free. And it was in, a, it was in the car barn up on uh, Harford Road. There's an old car, a streetcar car barn. And it was a storage place, and it was in there for a while. And the birds got in somewhere, and the thing was covered with bird stuff. We got when, when they decide we bring it down here. So they asked me, "What should we? What, what machine you want to use?" And I told them, "I said I like that one. It has stuff on it, and it looks like it's in good shape. So that's why we brought it down here." Mm -hmm. And they busted a piece or a couple of pieces when they moved it, but other than that, it's okay. We fixed it. I've been fooling with the Lonotype at the museum here for uh, like about 25 years or so and been coming every Saturday. I never hardly ever miss. And uh, I sort of gravitated to the Lonotype machine because I knew about it. Here it is there. And we've had about four of them over, over the years. I only, I only really know one machinist that's able to work on them and fix them. I have to keep this one going. It's just automatic. Saturday comes, this is where I, I come down here. And my wife, I said, to tolerates it so to the point that she calls it her day off. Oh, tomorrow's my day off. Mine too. <laughs>